It's me, I'm back. I feel like I'm about to tell you a spooky story, right? Uh, well, I'm not. I'm gonna talk about vulnerability today. Vulnerability, rambling, ADHD, brain dump. And it's gonna be hard to follow. I don't know where to start. I've, I've always been confused by the word vulnerability. Nobody could ever explain to me what the F they were talking about from an autistic standpoint. What I mean by that is that so often I would be told that my problem was that I wasn't being vulnerable. Quite frankly, they didn't know the problem was autism and ADHD. Rejection sensitivity and all of these other things going mute. So what does being vulnerable mean? I think for the average person, it just simply means putting yourself out there, which uh, to a socially unskilled autistic person doesn't give much help. There have been times in my life where I overshared, and I overshared, like, specifically because I was trying to be vulnerable. I'm like, well, this is what being vulnerable is, right? Being vulnerable is literally just treating the person that you're talking to like they're a therapist, right? Like just putting, just dumping all your shit out there, just letting everyone hear it. And uh, yeah, that's not what being vulnerable is either. I, I should look up the definition. Let's look up the definition. I'm on my computer right now. Google. Here's a vulnerable dictionary definition. It's an adjective. It means susceptible to physical or emotional attack or harm. And be vulnerable. What do you choose? The bear or the, the man, right? What do you choose? The human? Or the bear. Uh, so to be vulnerable would be allowing, being allow, allowing yourself to be put in a position to be attacked or harmed physically or emotionally. Be vulnerable. Uh, similar in danger, in peril, in jeopardy at risk, endangered, unsafe. Just put yourself in an unsafe position uh, of a person in need of a special care, support, or protection. Oh, okay. Uh, because of age, disability, or risk of abuse or neglect. And see, this is a sentence. Employees, employees must be better trained in how to deal with vulnerable young people. And this is what I used to say. I've never been diagnosed autistic. It's obvious that I'm autistic at this point. Specifically like the level one autistic. Um, and you, you go talk to whoever. And they, they just love this. Be vulnerable. It sounds so fucking good, doesn't it? Be vulnerable. I would actually tell people when they told me to be vulnerable that... Just, just in case, uh, I, I, I've, I painted my shirt. If, if you're like, what's the blood on his shirt going? It does. I'm in a horror movie right now. No horror movie talking to you in an ASMR way. Did I mention I have ADHD as well? So I've, I've told people when they say to be vulnerable, I've said, I feel like I'm vulnerable. Like at every second of the day, I feel. When I'm existing in the world, I literally am vulnerable. I'm just there. And they'll do whatever they want to do to me. Which, of course, uh, that's how it feels, right? And the funny thing is, when I took on a persona of F you, get the F away from me, which, from my very... Uh, maybe empathetic or nice guy 
vibes or something. Maybe it came across as a, maybe my belief of like, I'm being like, get, get the F away from me. Maybe that's just being, having boundaries. But no one ever told me, you should have boundaries. You know, it was always, you should be more vulnerable with people. The exact opposite of what I needed. So I've always been confused by this word vulnerability. You know, um, and I think the conclusion that I've gotten to still is not much of a conclusion. It kind of means more like share your interests and thoughts. But why the fuck would they use the word vulnerable if that's what they mean? Just share your opinions, your thoughts, and your the, the things that you watch on TV to random people. That's what being vulnerable means to them. Uh, for the, uh, I think that being vulnerable is used and spoken of so highly because holistic people, non-ADHD, neurotypical, they exist in a world of lies. I hate to use that kind of word, that language. They exist in like a, a weird like obfuscation of reality in a way that autistic people and neurodiverse people find it almost difficult to, to even conceptualize. Like, for real, you're just, you're just saying the thing that sounds good. You're, you're not even talking about reality. So, uh, so a, so when neurotypicals are giving this advice to each other, be vulnerable, be vulnerable. That's what you should do is be vulnerable. What they're really telling, what they're really saying is that they're speaking, again, to other neurotypical people. That's the expectation of where you might be, that you would, would be a neurotypical. And all they really know, you know, back in the day, before this neurotypical, neurodiverse language came about, people would say introvert, extrovert. And since America is so extroverted, they would say, it, it kind of, you kind of realize that a lot of times it was extroverts talking to other extroverts. And you had to kind of take what they said and, and filter it through like the lens of yourself, right? I mean, to a degree, everyone has to do that, right? Oh, as an autistic ADHD person or a neurodiverse person, one of the things that we always have to keep in mind is that you will need to listen to these people that do not understand your perspective at all, and they will offer advice and offer their thoughts, and you will have to take those thoughts and then filter them through your understanding of your reality. If you are like I used to be and like I still sometimes struggle with this feeling of like I'm not right in the world and I don't know what I'm doing and therefore I'm going to ask other people like what do I do? How do I exist? How do I get the job or the the girlfriend or the whatever, right? Whatever it is that you want. They will give their advice, but their advice is going to be based on on a neurotypical understanding of the world. And they will never understand that their advice is relatively just useless to somebody who is not existing in the same way as them. So, to get into a little bit more about myself um, in the past, you know, I would be 
uh, constantly told to be vulnerable. Now, even myself, I didn't know, am I being, when I'm in the world and I'm around people, is this social anxiety, is this CPTSD trauma things, are they kind of the same thing? And what does vulnerable mean to a socially anxious person? Does it mean just simply going out into the world? Does it mean saying hello to a new person? You know, uh, again, one of the things that becomes difficult for me is, is that since that really no one really listening to anybody is just ultimately kind of useless there and and it gets you to the point of what's the point in listening or talking to anyone at all if they really are existing in another space from me then what what do you do what can you do because all of the advice or at least 99% of it is written with a neurotypical person in mind. And a lot of the advice is simply advice that is given in a way that drives you towards neurotypicality. You know, like, try, try to be a little bit less autistic without saying, try to be a little bit less autistic. And from my perspective, I think, like, maybe that even is the correct thing. Maybe that's what you should do. Try to be a little bit less autistic. If your desire is to fit into the world. But the crazy thing is, right, if you think about this, the crazy thing is that to be less autistic would be me would mean to mask and to mask would be would mean be less vulnerable you know put the mask on the it's the exact opposite of what they would tell you to do be more be more vulnerable now i think that once you've established some amount of relationship with someone then you like slowly take the mask off and you actually do be more vulnerable. But I can only speak for myself. The advice, be vulnerable, was specifically given to this, uh, how, how do you meet people? What do you do when you talk to people? Be more vulnerable. It just, it just, even now, I, I confuse myself with all of this. How do you be more vulnerable while not, while masking? And you do need to mask to some extent when you're in the world. So what do you actually do? And the answer is, I have no fucking idea. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the answer is. I'm going to look at my computer. I have uh, things written down here to talk about. I have been massively frustrated. I've been massively frustrated. And, uh, at, you know, further down I talk about Brianne Brown. Brianne Brown and the... Well, I'm going to make up something that sounds good to my brain. And the commercialization of vulnerability. The... 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 The, the over... Uh, over attachment to the word vulnerable, the over attachment to the belief of being vulnerable. One of the worst things about some of these uh, thought leaders is how they get they get that one thing. And I get it from a person who who makes content. I'm even at this point leaning into my autistic ADHD, ADHD. Um, person, persona, like, it's, it's what I struggle with, it's what I deal with, it's one of the things that I deal with, but I noticed that when I put ADHD in the title, people, people, uh, check out the video, 
So when you're a thought leader, you know, I love that. I love that phrase. What happens is you find your thing. Oh, I'm going to be the vulnerable person. I'm going to talk about vulnerability. At this point, and actually, for anyone who likes Brian Brown, please you like who you like. All right, enjoy who you enjoy. Uh, get um, benefit and help from whoever you can. Maybe for you, the concept of vulnerability was that like light bulb thing, and you're like, yeah, I get that, I get it. But for me, I read her book, I listened to her talks. And I got more and more annoyed and pissed off and frustrated and angry because at no point did I feel like I ever understood what she was even saying. Be vulnerable. You know, and I think, again, it, it's almost like it's from the, it's from the space of a neurotypical brain. It's from the space of you already have relationships. You already have. And it's from the space, I'm so sorry. But it's from the space of a woman. It's from the space of a, of a, you know, maybe if I was a, a guy, but I was living in Seattle, I gotta tell you, in South Carolina, if I walked up to some dudes and I talked and I was emotionally vulnerable, I would be rejected, you know, and, and a lot of guys don't want to deal with it, and a lot of women don't want to deal with it from a guy, and so that's, that's emotional vulnerability, right, if you watch my channel, you know I'm very good at that. Uh, I, I'm overly uh, attenuated to my emotional, to my feelings of emotional vulnerability. Again, it's the frustrating thing for me was this constant feeling of like every advice I'm getting, I kind of feel like I need to do the opposite. And is that an autistic thing or a male thing? Or, or a me thing, right? I mean, male in terms of me. Um, be vulnerable while being stoic. Guys like stoicism. It's, it's all mixed together. But I genuinely dislike Brian Brown's voice at this point. I dislike hearing her speak about vulnerability because nobody has ever been able to properly define it for me. But I think the the definition changes with every with every context of person that you're talking to. Like vulnerable with my mom means something different than vulnerable with my dad means something different with vulnerable with my with a random person out in the world means something different than vulnerable with uh with somebody that I'm drunk with at a bar. Uh, not that I'm drunk at a bar with anyone. Being, vul being vulnerable means something different uh, right here, right now. And so, so what the fuck does it mean at the end of the day? It's not helpful. And again, my, my autistic misunderstanding of the word vulnerable led me to overshare, which put me in a too vulnerable space. So many autistic people, women, but men as well, like we get involved in relationships with people because sometimes because we are desperate and needy because we, we, we don't get them very often, but, but we, we, Again, it, it's almost like that, uh, the golden rule, do unto others as you want others to do unto you or whatever. You, as an autistic person, you might hear the good idea or the, like, this is the rule that we're all going to live by. 
And you go, oh, okay, that sounds like a great idea. And next thing you know, you're living by the rule. And you're realizing other people aren't living by the rule. Only by then you're old and bitter and miserable because you're like, wait a second. I thought we were all like trying to be good people. Uh-oh. Turns out not all of us were. In the same way, for, for the autistic person, if you will try vulnerability, you have to, you have to put that like caveat in there. Like, not everybody else will be uh, hearing this and going, yeah, let's do that. And so there are going to be a lot of negative emotional vultures, emotional vampires. There are going to be people that are going to prey on even a slight bit of vulnerability. Some people will hear your vulnerability and go, oh my God, this is great. Not, oh, I found a new friend, but this is great. I can use and abuse this person because they're a dumbass. They're being vulnerable. And so the caveat that needs to be put in, in place for, for autistic people, if they're going to try to be vulnerable, is you got to make sure, you got to take it slow and make sure that the person that you're going to even be vulnerable with is, is the right person. But then again, my mind jumps too. When I was told to be vulnerable, which was specifically just involved with like making friends and establishing myself in the world, right? And, and what they were probably meaning was, I, I still don't know. What does that even mean? I guess just just give random information about yourself to people and hope that you're giving the correct information? I don't know. Let me, 25 minutes I've been talking. Perception of vulnerability. Here's where I got to the part, here's where I got to the place of thinking that I was oversharing or that I was giving things away about myself that maybe was too much. The amount of people that at some point have thanked me, um, but in a very neurotypical, I'm saying the words that I think I'm supposed to say, they would say, thank you. Thank you for being vulnerable. And I'd be like, what are you talking about? I'm just like sharing. And, and it confused me as well. Like, I'm um, on one hand being told constantly that I should be vulnerable and my problem with not making friends or not getting a life going in the world was that I was not being vulnerable. But then, so often, I would hear people say, thank you for being vulnerable. So I would always be like, well, which is it? What are you actually saying? What am I actually supposed to do? Am I supposed to be vulnerable? Or, and is that the, the key to making connections and friendships? Or am I not supposed to be vulnerable? Because it seems that when I am vulnerable, I either get ghosted or I get, um, or I get taken it, or I recognize that some people who are maybe negative, toxic, bad people are, you know, they're getting that like psycho smile, like sharpening their, their claws, like this is going to be fun. I'm going to, I'm going to get you. And part of, part of this channel was me being vulnerable, I guess. You know, I understand when people say push past your comfort zone, that was, it, it started with that, wasn't it? So all of this kind of started 
with the concept of comfort zone. Get yourself out of your comfort zone. Push past your comfort zone. And I honestly think that was probably, for me anyways, a much better way of thinking about vulner like vulnerability or what I think people meant when they're talking about vulnerability, which is feel a little bit nervous, but then allow yourself to go further or something. And uh, starting this channel for me was an act of vulnerability, I guess. You know, one thing that was, that I that comes to me now. One thing that comes to me now is this, the whole ADHD, and I usually hear about rejection sensitive, re rejection sensitivity dysphoria as it relates to ADHD, not so much as it relates to autism, but I think both experience that, you know. And um, again, when you only hear be vulnerable from neurotypicals and from a neurotypical space, I think that, you know, if you're autistic or ADHD, being vulnerable really needs to, again, like be filtered through the the truth of recognizing your own, the possibility, the possibility that you'll be vulnerable and they will reject you. You will be putting yourself in a position to be harmed, but not in a, oh, isn't this beautiful? Isn't it so great that you are vulnerable? But in a real, like, you need to really think about what level a vulnerable you can even get to or whatever with with a, with whatever that word means to you it's it's all murky uh, even even now that i'm talking about this i'm i'm frustrated the more i speak uh, how much is how much masking do you need you need to mask you, you do. I, 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 I think some people, I think some people take this autistic, let go of the mask, put it down so far that it becomes a religious truth or something. I'm going to walk out into the world and stem freely and, and like, yeah, act as abnormally or or normally autistic as, as, as I will, as I choose to, that's fine, but, but what price are you going to pay for that? And are you putting yourself in actual, um, to even get back to the definition of vulnerable? Vulnerable as a definition, susceptible to physical or emotional attack or harm. So how vulnerable will you be? And how vulnerable is the smart thing to be? And dropping that mask a little bit is going to put you, if you, were, if you do it, and if you present yourself in such a way that people can tell, that will put you in actual, in some, some places, in actual physical harm. And... I just, again, I'm, I just get, I get so uh, angry about and annoyed at just the simplicity of some people's uh, you know, words. Just be vulnerable. Be vulnerable. Push past your comfort zone without without recognizing or even speaking to the truths of it being a dangerous thing to do or a very hard thing to do or even a confusing thing to do in the same way that that autistic people are confused constantly about this concept of the mask and and if you've learned a mask for your entire life then who are you and all that well 
Who are you as a vulnerable person? Who are you as being vulnerable? I read that Brianne Brown book. I listened to her talks. And what I came away with was just an absolute feeling of confusion. Okay, so I'm doing what I, I often do and, and repeating myself. So I'll kind of just end it there. This has been my a part of my vulnerability journey, I guess. And, um, and uh, I would say next time someone tells you to be vulnerable, give them a middle finger first of all, and then say, eh, what do you even mean? And just like often, just like it always is with a lot of neurotypical people, they probably won't even be able to define it. They probably won't even be able to really talk about it. Like the whole, uh, when you go on a date, just be yourself. Okay, well, what do you mean? What are you talking about? Are you, are you talking about being myself? Well, you know, your best version of yourself. Like, it's, it's a constant, it's a constant nothing. That's my problem. My problem so much with language is that when you really drill down into it, you kind of come across, come away from it with a feeling of, are you even saying anything? Are you saying anything at all? Is that neurotypical? Is that autistic? Is that, is that just being human? Maybe at the end of this, maybe I've said nothing. I don't know. I hope that you've gotten something from this. Uh, good luck with your vulnerability journey. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye.